Hello everybody and welcome to today's tune-up. Today we're going to be talking about the bow and a little bit about the physics of the bow and the weight of the bow on the string. So here's a thought experiment for you. Imagine carrying a plank of wood. This could be your plank of wood. Imagine you're carrying the plank of wood by holding it at one end. And just think about how heavy that's going to feel. Versus picking up one end and having a friend hold the other end for you, it's going to be a lot easier. So you need less force if you have a friend at each end versus if you're doing it all on your own at one end. So why am I talking about planks of wood? Why, Neil? Um, because it relates to bowing. So here's an exercise to try. Try just doing a bow without using any kind of pressure or weight. You're just simply holding the frog of the bow to stop it from falling down. This is what you get. Did you hear how that note got louder as I approached the frog? So the reason it gets louder is the same reason that that plank of wood feels really heavy when you're holding it at one end, because you're supporting the whole weight very close to the point where you're, you're holding it versus, well, basically the weight of the bow here is, is mostly up here, and you're trying to support that far away weight with a force that's close by. So you need a lot more of that force. So that's why the string gets more weight if you're near the frog. And so if you want to get a crescendo on a note, it's very natural to have it be on an up bow. When you want a decrescendo, a down bow. Now, of course, when we bow, we don't always want a decrescendo or a crescendo. So how do we avoid that? So one thing to think about are those pinky push-ups that we've talked about, or we will be talking about. So the pinky basically can take weight off of the string by making the bow rotate upwards about your thumb. Okay, so that's the role of the pinky. That's why it's important to have the pinky on the tip so that we can do those those kind of motions. So when we're near the frog, the pinky can take some of that weight. Uh, another thing to use is the weight of the arm. So when you're not at the frog and you want a bit more sound, you, you don't. What, one thing you don't want to do is just press. You don't want to press with your muscles. You'd much rather just let gravity do the work. Okay. And if you're um, an average person like me, um, your bow, if you have a full-size bow, weighs about 60 grams. And your arm, I weighed mine earlier. I'll show you how I did that. Just get my uh, scale going here. Oh, it appears not to be working. So anyway, I've broken the scale. Um, I weighed my arm and it weighed about three kilograms, 3,000 pounds. So that's about 50 times as much as my bow. So I've got plenty of weight in the arm without doing any pressing to make that sound be even. And the way we do that is... pronating the arm, which is a little bit of this motion, and just allowing the weight to come down through primarily your first finger and a little bit of the second finger. So your bow hold, you'll have your thumb kind of between your middle fingers there. And so, and so anything this side of the thumb is going to help get weight into the string. Anything this side of the thumb, mostly your pinky, is going to relieve weight off the string. So that's a bit of the bow physics for you today, something to think about, but I do recommend this exercise of just try what's the natural weight of the bow without me doing anything and just hear that crescendo. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.